Hey guys, welcome to Tyson's Fitness Tips Podcast. If you want to lose weight, increase your energy, improve your health and fitness, and look your best, then you have come to the right place. My name is Tyson Brown. I'm a personal trainer, and my job is to help you transform your body by sharing with you the most up-to-date information on health and fitness. I'm going to distill it all down for you into bite-sized, actionable steps that you can take immediately to see results quickly. Now, every Tuesday and Thursday, you can expect a brand new episode, which will be a mixture of interviews with top experts from around the world in the fitness space, and as well as solo episodes from myself, sharing with you exactly what action steps you need to take to transform your health, your body, and your life. So, let's get into the show. Hey guys, just a quick update. Unfortunately, the recording isn't the best on this podcast, but Blake drops a ton of knowledge bombs, so please bear with me. You are absolutely going to love this. If you have any questions about it, make sure to comment and let me know. I'll hit reply on the podcast, but I really appreciate you bearing with through because there's some gold. and roll? Yep. Cool. Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome back to another episode of Tyson's Fitness Tips. Now today, I've got another Australian guest. That's right, I'm going to keep them coming because we've had the Americans for too long and the Aussies needed to be taken back over. So I've decided to bring on a pretty popular personal trainer over in Sydney, Australia, actually where I'm from too. And I wanted to get him on the show today because Blake talks a lot about... He's got challenges that are out there, you know, six weeks and things like that. But a lot of the six-week challenges that are out there, uh, they want to get you in. They want to get you to lose weight. And then they kind of, they're done with you. But Blake takes a different approach, which is why I wanted to bring him on today. Because his unique approach to this, as I think, is really important and you need to hear from it. So, Blake, thank you so much for coming on to the show today. I really appreciate it, mate. Mate, thanks for having me. Cool. So, for the people who don't know you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? And, you know, how long have you been doing this personal training thing? And what kind of got you into it? Uh, well, I've been doing it pretty much since the day I left school, so um, 15, 16 years now, uh, and which is, as you know, in this industry, puts me in the dinosaur category. It's a pretty uh, high turnover industry, so I've um, been doing it a long time, and for me, it was kind of a case of, you know, when I was in kind of year 11 and 12, I wanted to play AFL um, at the highest level, and when that didn't happen... I kind of fell back on the fact that I loved health and fitness and this was the obvious answer. So, um, you know, I was one of the few lucky ones, I reckon, that worked it out early what he wanted to do and um, I haven't kind of looked back since. That's pretty cool. So I guess, like, you know, it's kind of like a lifelong fitness thing that you've been doing. Yeah, and and even, um, you know, for me, it's evolved a lot. The industry and I guess my approach... You know, the last 15, 16 years, and a lot of the stuff now, you know, becomes kind of expands on between, you know, on from the sets, reps, and, and broccoli into the mindset and lifestyle side of things as well to make sure that the impact I'm having goes well beyond the gym um, and is quite long term in terms of its, uh, you know, impact on someone. Yeah, and I, I really like that you touch on that point because. Obviously, that's what I noticed your program does too. It doesn't just focus on you know losing weight, hitting the gym, doing those things. It also focuses on the most important thing, which a lot of people don't think about, is that mindset component. Absolutely, mate. And, and it's it's a fine line because for us, you know, like I look at the six-week program, I've got another kind of coaching program, which is almost like, um, you know, the big brother to the six-week program. And it's very much a coaching lifestyle and having people more fulfilled, but for me, it's very much, yeah, cool, we run a six-week transformation program, but if people were to come in and do the program um, and not be a happier, more fulfilled, more aware, more conscious person when they left, my job was done because they'll repeat the cycle, you know, time and time again and, and be in the same spot in, in three to five years' time. So um, we kind of get them in from a marketing point of view, essentially, with what they think they want and then educate them on what they need and, and the big picture once they're in and starting to see change. Okay, that's cool. And so, like, how did you... 
how did you start to notice that the mindset was the big thing? Was it because you noticed people who were training in the past were falling back into their old patterns or what kind of sparked that? You're like, you know what? This needs to be addressed. Yeah, I think that's a big thing is, you know, like we, you know, full credit to everyone in the industry for doing such a brilliant job. And at this point in time, we're going to lose from the battle a little bit um, because we're still, as a nation, getting worse from a health and... Um, you know, health, happiness, and body composition point of view. So I figured that, you know, yeah, cool, I was um, making some changes, and but it, as a whole, we aren't on top of it. So there has to be more than the way that we're going about it. I think the other part to it for me is, is um, my kind of own personal journey. You know, like for, for the first probably 10 years of my training life it was very much how can i get the best you know condition how many miles can i run how heavy can i lift um how can i get that you know unreal body composition and i got you know a little bit bored of that after 10 years and i wanted to expand for both myself and then you know whatever expanded for myself use that as a um, extra tool you know to help others and that's kind of where you know, human behaviour and expanding on one's health, happiness, um, and habits essentially has kind of started to take me and hopefully have me, um, you know, a little bit of a point of difference for those that are just still talking sets, bre- you know, sets, reps, and broccoli. Absolutely, I like you saying that. So, when it comes to the mindset and the behaviour and psychology and things like that, if you could kind of just say, you know, if someone wants to start making positive, long-lasting changes in their behavior. Is there like a certain point that you start people off at that we could kind of give the listeners for today to kind of start thinking about? Yeah, mate, like for me, the first step before any kind of transformation is awareness. And we as a society think that we're pretty onto it and pretty cluey. But the fact is that we are all pretty much walking around as robots so you know i create a little bit of understanding of where we're at as a you know general population and also what got us here um and where we're at is essentially five percent conscious so five percent awake and 95 percent unconscious so 95 percent asleep and that serves us in a number of ways because if we were a hundred percent conscious we wouldn't we wouldn't get much done so you know, if you think about it, we there's, there's essentially four steps of learning. So, and, and a lot of this happens in the imprint period, which is from zero to seven, and our biggest idols or our biggest influences at that stage are our parents. So we, be, we essentially become a pretty strong byproduct of our parents, which brings about plenty of good and obviously a number of things that are, you know, we're not so good. But essentially, you've got four stages of learning. You've got unconsciously unskilled, where you don't know what you don't know, then you've got consciously unskilled, where you know that you're not very good at something, or you know that you don't know, consciously skilled and unconsciously skilled. So with that, if we were to be conscious of everything, we'd be exhausted from, you know, like driving the car. We'd have to think about our keys, we'd have to look down into the keyhole, we'd have to turn it, foot on the brake, and put it into, you know, to drive and take off, whereas we can do that unconsciously now. So essentially being unconscious helps us because we just do all things automatically, but we also do a lot of things that aren't serving us automatically. And that's where I work with these people to essentially rewire their brain with unconscious things that aren't working for them and create a new platform that's serving them a little bit better. 95 percent unconscious that is bizarre i would never think that that's how much unconsciousness is going on in the background yeah yeah we're on auto repeats uh for most of the day most of the time that's crazy and i think that's a key point though because if we know that if we know that there's that unconsciousness we can make those decisions to make unconscious decisions that are actually positive for us instead of negative like creating good habits that automatically go on instinctual eventually Mate, absolutely, and that's, you know, like I said, is is waking someone up is a really good first step, and then, um, you know, for me, I, I've got a coaching program, which which the, the first step is awareness before you kind of go into, you know, transformation and then finish off with acceleration, 
And what it is is essentially giving them the basic understanding of why they do what they do. Um, and that's where a lot of the imprint period talk comes from. And then, you know, essentially what, what I call blind spots. So, you know, it'd be nice if we as humans had some ruthless friends who said, mate, like, you're doing this and I don't know if it's necessarily working for you. But we as a society tend to be a little bit kind of soft around the edges and pat everyone on the back and talk, you know, and, and often talk about them behind their back. But if we were to, um, you know, bring it to someone's attention, then they have a level of awareness where they can choose what they want to do with it and then, you know, you create something from there. So most of us don't have the awareness um of the things that aren't serving us and if we do we're not sure how to like go about it or how to change it so we just become this frustrated person who can see that we're doing stuff that isn't working for us but we don't know what to do with that and i i'm guessing that's where like uh it's good to have outside eyes come in and kind of like people who have been where they've been before just had the experience like you know reading into psychology and things like that whether it be a trainer whether it be someone like yourself or whether it be them just studying books to understand their own mindset so they can become aware conscious and then become competent and being able to change that too spot on it's yeah it starts with becoming conscious there and that's where habits are formed it's set it's essentially becoming aware conscious um you know repetition and then you can move into unconscious and unconscious is good when we've got a new skill set you know like if we were to if you think about it you you probably now could go for a three hour drive and not have a clue what you just did for the last three hours you know you're driving you know you stopped at red you know you went at green you know you went green at go um but you didn't have to consciously think about it your mind probably wandered off you might have been singing on you know to the radio you might have been talking to people in the car you don't have to consciously do that when you were starting you know it was all eyes on the roll you know the road you're holding the, uh, the the seat, you know, the the, um, the steering wheel super tight. And you had to focus. You had to look left, look right when you were, you know, changing lanes. That's when you're really conscious, and that's when it takes a lot of energy. But when you can have this really savvy skill that's working in your favour, move into that unconscious phase, then you don't have to think about, it. and that's essentially where the habits are formed. Yeah, I think that's really cool, and I think like people can start doing that even when it comes to like their health and fitness if it's waking up in the morning and starting off with a tall glass of water every morning, something like that, just to get that. It's a small habit. It's a win. It's a healthy habit. But eventually, that's going to become unconscious. Every morning, you're just going to wake up and go, I drink my water straight away without even having to think about it eventually. Mate, 100%. And I think that's like that's a really big part for me of why um, I teach them the kind of the four stages of learning because you know if you understand that stage two, which is stage two is you know consciously unskilled it's like you know if you if you're learning to squat for the first time you're going to be pretty like awkward but if you know that that middle stage is a little bit clunky and it's a little bit murky and it's a little bit annoying then you just know that you're working through those four steps and you just know that this is part of the process one of the problems for us humans is because we're actually quite savvy a lot of stuff now is if we go to learn a new skill we get too frustrated and we give up too easily as opposed to knowing frustration is essentially step two where you're not very good at it move to step three where you're good at it but it requires focus move to step four where you're good at it and it doesn't require focus just know that that's part of the process you know because at the end of the day when we were you know newborns we were resilient as anything because there's no way that we walked the first time we tried to stand up but you know after 50 60 have many attempts you nail it but as we get older our resilience gets weaker and we don't understand the learning process, so we don't see it through. Is there a reason, like, is there anything behind why our resilience get, gets weaker as we get older? Is it just because it takes a lot of effort when we've got a lot of other things going on, or is there something different behind it? Yeah, I think overwhelm is the biggest thing for people. Um, and I think as a general rule of thumb, we get more stuck in our ways as we get older. And it's actually scientifically proven that we, you know, you hear people talk about getting stuck in their ways, but by the time a person turns 35, their whole genetic programming has been set. And that's not to say it can't be set, uh, reset, that's kind of what I do, but you know, when someone's stuck in their ways, they literally are stuck in their ways. Most of it's created by the time you're seven, which is known as the imprint period, but it is full, you are fully developed from a 
programming point of view by the time you're 35. So you actively need to um, change things, like really actively need to change things if you're going to turn the ship around. Huh. It kind of sounds like the you know the saying, the best time to plant a tree was yesterday or 10 years ago, but the second best time is today. So if you know that you need to start making these changes, you need to do it as soon as possible because the older you're getting, the harder it's going to be to change what you've already set course on. For sure. And that's, you know, that's the other saying is if you try to catch two rabbits, you'll end up catching none. And for me, just working on refining one one new pattern or one new belief or one new thought, you know, one new action, whatever it is, at a time is really important as opposed to trying to do too many things. So when I'm coaching someone, we look at like layering it, you know, so if it's nutrition, we might start with just their breakfast. And when they feel that it's just second nature that they're having a smoothie or they're eating breakfast or that they've you know changed from you know white bread to sourdough whatever it is whatever your beliefs are around nutrition then we can layer that on with the next thing but to go you know here's your here's your meal let's chuck it upside down and start your whole thing new that's why everyone's doing four to five fads a year and no one's having any success Oh man, I yeah, I know exactly what you mean. And I, I like that. I like what you just said about the stacking. You know, like when you build on that good first habit and you get that solid rock solid foundation, you can add something that's gonna help. Like it's gonna be easier to add on to that good habit instead. Totally, totally, mate. Spot on. Very cool. And so, you does this uh, the six weeks to shredder, the six weeks to sexy? Is this what is covered in that in your program too? Yeah. So. F- I mean, most people, as you can imagine, come to me to have a physical transformation, and that is where we start. And then I slowly um, educate them on other possibilities, because because for a lot of people, you know, despite the fact that we've got access to so much information, a lot of people sincerely believe that their problems are, are going to dissolve when they have a, a physical transformation. And yeah, cool, they feel fitter, stronger, more energized, slightly more confident, but it like it doesn't fix everything. And that's where for me, you know, that's that's why I essentially say this is the platform for you. Um, to energize, become more confident, more stronger, you know, slightly better habits. And if you are looking for more fulfillment or you're looking to break through in other areas of your life or you're looking just to kind of um, you know, step up in everything, then we have a coaching program that can take you up to a new level. So you kind of, you know, serve them what they think they need, but you give them what they actually need eventually. Because like you said, a lot of people think when I achieve X, I will be happy. You know, whether I make this amount of money or whether I get this type of body, when in reality, there you're not going to be happy when you hit that goal. There are a lot of other things in there, especially like you've talked about the mindset, which is so important that you need to be able to work on. Totally, yeah, and and I, I've got nothing wrong with physical transformations. Like they serve, they have their place in time, um, but it's not for me. It's not everything, and I, I, I'm respectful to those that uh, think it is. I, I've just, I've just, I just essentially to to those guys, which is totally fine as well. Yeah, you make a good point. Like. When you change your physical body, your confidence is going to prove you are going to be happier, but you're not going to be, for the rest of your life, you're not going to be in this pure bliss state where everything's perfect because you have a good looking body. Yeah, spot on. Nailed it. Excellent. And so, apart from, is that what makes your program so different, Blake? Like, is it that mindset component, or are there other things in there too that you want, it, that you make sure is differentiated from those typical six weeks programs? Well, for me, it's it's really is a case of um, you know there's, there's a couple of components. If you go to most gyms, it's easy for you to get lost as another number. And one of the things that I've that's always been really important to me is to make sure that culture, community, and results are at the forefront. And um, results now become you know, loss in, they, they don't hold as much significance because a lot of people are kind of guaranteeing results and things like that. And there's some pretty good programs out there. So for me, we kind of go, okay, we need, our results need to be better than anyone else's. Absolutely, 100%. And, you know, from a culture and community point of view, they need to feel part of something bigger than themselves, which is a really important thing these days, you know, with so many people on computers and isolated. 
um, they come here and they make best friends and they feel part of something bigger than themselves and they don't get lost is just another number. You know, and from my side of things, I'm working with them individually to uh, help them achieve their own goals as opposed to, you know, just go to this class and you work up a sweet and you burn 400 calories based on the, you know, based on the heart rate monitor that you earn, et cetera. Um, and for me, that's really important to have those kind of touch points and, to, and for them to feel like they are part of something and, you know, connected with me as opposed to just um, some random trainer who barely knows a thing about them. So true. And it's like, that's another thing when it comes to psychology too. Like people, who, that's why CrossFit's done so well. It's because of that community. People aren't just another number. They're surrounded with people who want to achieve the same goals as them or they're just in that positive health mindset. And when you're around those same type of people, you feel good, you feel accepted, you want to come back again and again and again. And it's not just from the like you know the uh, other people that are there. It's also from that trainer making sure they're giving you the time of day and you're taking care of them. Totally, 100% nailed it. And when it, when it comes, like, you know, people wanting to, like you said, I think a big mistake that people make is they try and flip everything at once and they try and make such a big change to everything. Is that probably the biggest mistake you see people make when they want to try and make a healthy transformation or is there something else you've noticed that a lot of people seem to be making that, they, that needs to be fixed? Yeah, oh, mate, the, li- the list is kind of endless a little bit. It, it's definitely trying to change too much at once. It's, it's not knowing yourself either. And the reason I say that is because if you've done exactly what you've done in the past, you're going to get exactly what you've got in the past. And people go, okay, like, you know, over the last five years, I've tried 20 fad diets and it hasn't succeeded. So let me just try another one and, and assume this is going to be different. The problem isn't with the fad diet. Although, you know, we can clearly say there's plenty of fad diets that there are problems with. But as a, as a rule of thumb, the problem isn't with the fad diets with you because you're the common denominator in this. So it's being, it's being more aware of yourself and where you keep breaking down. And that's obviously a big part of why I do what I do. It's because, you know, you can go to an F45 and spend three months there. You can then go on, you know, this is no good and, and go to a, a um, you know, a CrossFit for the next three months and go, oh, this isn't any good either. And then go to a, you know, fitness first for the next three months and go, oh, this sucks. And, and it's like people legit think that the problem's outside of them when it's clear that they are the common denominator and the problem's within. Yeah. And it's funny because a lot of people, like you've talked about a little bit earlier, people don't like to hear that. Like, being told that truth and saying, hey, the problem is actually you and you need to get that sorted, like, it can hurt, but people need to be able to hear that, that that is what is, they are the cause of what's going on there. Yeah, mate, for sure. And I I think, like, personally, I think everyone should have a friend, at least, or a coach who holds them accountable to a higher stand. Like, we as a society think we're doing the right thing by you know, patting someone on the back and saying, well done. And yeah, that's got its place. Like we all love a little bit of positive reinforcement, but at the same time, for me personally, and and I get that I'm a bit (laughs) different in a couple of ways, but for me personally, if I could see that someone had more in them, it's not me being like a jerk. It's me knowing that they're capable of more and um, bringing it to their attention and, and not kind of shooting them down in any way but just holding them accountable to a higher standard and when they reach their higher standard you know they'll look back and go I'm glad someone um, you know held me accountable or someone brought it to my attention because you know we're, we're so good at talking about our friends and talking about other people but they might not know what they're doing wrong you know like do the right thing and be empathetic and compassionate and you know just bring it to their attention and, and if they are triggered and they don't want to hear about it at least you've done your bit and if you know they're stoked that you brought it to attention then you've given them an amazing opportunity for growth and to step out of what's currently not serving them yeah and I think that's why it's also important like you said to have a coach I mean friends and family can have good intentions but you're hiring a coach for a reason and they're going, well, most coaches should be there to be able to tell you, you know, be able to see the potential in you and pick you up when you're failing and say, hey, I know you're better than this. Let's get you back on track because you need that little bit. Of, they're not going to 
kick you while you're down, but they're going to give you that stubborn love that you need to show you what you're actually capable of. And that's exactly why I still have my own coach. It's not because I don't know how to train or I don't know how to you know, do things. It's because he can keep me accountable. And when I have somebody else there who I've got to keep accountable to, it actually helps keep me motivated and on track because I don't want to disappoint my coach. Totally, totally. And, mate, in all honesty, like for me, I think good coaches um, – don't necessarily give their opinion, and that's that's been a big thing for me, you know, in the past. And I'm am still a recovering ego, but you know, in the past it was essentially how you know how many people could I voice my opinion to? And a good coach doesn't necessarily give you their opinion; they're just giving you different ways of looking at things and asking you questions that will expand your way of thinking. Like I don't go to a coach for them to validate my you know, belief or for me to validate something, I go to them to get a different way of thinking and for them to help me expand beyond. And I think, you know, if, if people are looking for an, one of the easiest ways to scale up their life is to surround themselves with people who are on a level above them. And, and whatever that interpretation is to you, whether it's someone who's fitter, faster, stronger, whether it's someone who's a, you know, a thought leader on a level above, whether it's someone who's making you know, $250,000 when you're making $100,000, whatever it is, it's probably the easiest way for you to scale up is to surround yourself with them. Yeah, and I think it comes back to what you just said about, like what we talked about earlier, the environment, who you surround yourself with is going to impact the choices you make on a daily basis. Well, the other thing about that as well is like, you know, when you understand the brain is your brain will normalize that. So if you... You know, if you're a hundred thousand dollar trainer and you're hanging around people that are sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars, cool. You look good because you're making a hundred thousand dollars. But you can easily hang around two hundred fifty thousand dollar people, and your brain thinks it's possible. Because if you're just hanging around a hundred, if you're a hundred thousand dollars and you're just hanging around people who are eighty thousand dollars, then the thought of making two hundred fifty thousand dollars looks big and it looks scary, it looks full on. Whereas if you're surrounding yourself with those type of people, all of a sudden your brain just sees that as a normal and it starts to normalize that and then all of a sudden you know your brain starts to shift that direction and it's not as hard as it once was when you were playing small hmm that's a really it's a really good way to uh like explain how that actually works because i, I think a lot of people don't realize that they don't realize ah. Uh, you know, how their mindset changes when they're around people who are higher up. All the same thing when they're around people who are lower up. Like if you're around people who always make poor decisions or who want to go out and party and stuff on the weekend, your decisions and like your level of, let's say, normal is going to be what all those other people do too. Totally, 100%. Huh. And so, but like becoming, like helping people become aware of just what's going on, Blake, like is there any... I wouldn't say like basic books, but like, is there any book that you would say, hey, you know what, if you kind of want to start just getting some type of understanding to see what's going on in your own head, is there any book you would recommend for people to start reading? There's a lot of good books. Um, basic mindset stuff. I think probably the uh, million dollar mindset or the millionaire mindset. Let me double check which one. I remember reading this ages ago. The millionaire... I think it's the millionaire mindset. Yeah. I think that, and, and probably Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Oh, yeah. Two, two good books that definitely are, are business-based, but also help you understand the mindset um, around it. And to be honest, the um, the best, or the, uh, the way I read these days and the, and the material I read is very different, but the best kind of self-help book that I've probably read ever was the first book I read, and it was... The Success Principles by Jack Canfield. And that just kind of expanded my way of thinking. Um, and today, you know, even today, although the stuff I read is a lot more intense and a lot more full on, it's still up there with, um, you know, the best books I've ever read. So The Success Principles by Jack Canfield. Is he the guy who wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul? Yeah, spot on. Okay, cool. So there's that. There's a millionaire mindset. And guys, I would actually recommend if you haven't read it yet, is Jordan Peterson's new book, 12 Rules for Life. Yeah. is a great book. Totally. Yeah, full on. It's a pretty challenging read, that one, in the first couple of chapters. 
Um, but yeah, bloody hell, it's good. Yeah, I actually got it on audiobooks. So I haven't read it physically, and just I find some books like that that are more complex. Listening to it is a lot more helpful. Yeah, good call, great call. And so, uh, Blake, th- like, where can people come find more about you? You know, we've talked a little bit about your program. Where can they go and have a look at that? The best spot's probably um, my website, Blake Royal Thompson, and that's got the different things that I do. So whether it's the coaching or the physical training, um, that would be the best spot. And, and, you know, if you kind of want some basic day-to-day tips and ideas, um, I tend to be pretty active on Instagram, which is just Blake Royal Thompson as well. Um, And for me, that's just a beautiful platform to have people thinking a little bit more when I post what I do and hopefully educating them um, along the way as well. Excellent. I love it, mate. So they can go to your website, which is obviously yourname.com, or they can just come and find your Instagram for daily tips, daily advice, and kind of get a little bit of inspiration. Yep, spot on. Wicked. Blake, I really appreciate you coming on today, mate. This was a bit of gold. People don't realize how important the mindset is, and I think when they start taking action and becoming aware and understanding those four quadrants, the better they get at it, the more likely they're going to be able to stick to those long-term habits that are going to be way more important than just doing some fad diet and then going back to their old behaviors. Spot on. Yeah, mate, that's all That's all I want is just to get people aware first and then starting to take some action to change what hasn't worked from the past. I love it. Thanks again, mate, for coming on. Guys, Go back, listen to this podcast again, start to get that mindset change, start to read those books, and I'm telling you, you can make those long-term habits and stop relying on diets for the rest of your life. Until next time, I'll speak to you guys then. Hey, thanks for listening to the podcast. I really appreciate it. Now, I've got a special gift for you. If you want to learn how I managed to lose 10 kilos and keep it off, then I've got the perfect treat for you. I've got a free intermittent fasting cheat sheet that I share on my website that shows you exactly how to diet effortlessly with intermittent fasting and fit it into your busy lifestyle. And more importantly, this is the exact guide that I follow every single day that allowed me to lose 10 kilos of body fat and keep it off four years later. So head on over to www.tysonbrown.com.au and pick up your free cheat sheet today and learn how to fit intermittent fasting into your life and diet effortlessly. Once again, that's www.tysonbrown.com.au. Opt in for the free cheat sheet and I'm going to send it straight to your inbox for free. Until next time, speak to you guys then.